When I started to, to reevaluate how I was doing things, for instance, at Cornell, asking more questions as opposed to telling, as opposed to telling, uh, and I'm a, I'm a really good rehearser. I am efficient. I think I'm fairly inspirational when I need to be. Uh, I, don't, I don't do music that I don't believe in, and so I'm pretty passionate. Um, I'm pretty good. Uh, but it started to be kind of, really, is, is that all there is, Alfie, you know? Uh, and so I had a real kind of crisis of, of what am I doing and why? Um, so I just started to do things differently. I started to ask more questions in rehearsals. I, I let them in on the process a little bit more. I, I project the score. I do that now. Oh, I've been doing that for about six years where uh, I, 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 I rehearse from the iPad or the iPad is there with the grad students and the score is projected behind me and so they see the big picture. I mean, the fact that we're still handing out parts in 2017, is that ridiculous? Is that utterly nuts? Um, choral people don't do that. I mean, yeah, they've got four, four voices, but so do we. So why aren't we reevaluating re how we make scores? Why aren't we making more Granger scores, for instance, that, that you know, everybody can see the big picture? So that's why I project the score, and it completely changed how I rehearsed, so that they can look up and go, well, I see that I actually have that, I have the same line with the clarinets. And so maybe that, see that vertical dynamic of forte that we have? That's probably a lie, right? Um, letting them in on the secret, you know, you know, I'm not the only expert in the room. Uh, there's pushback. There's pushback to that kind of teaching. Right? I had students come in when I was frustrated, you know, that was, would ask a question about a phrasing or, you know, a way to interpret something and I get the, the blank stare or no eye contact at all. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I asked students to come and talk to me and the pushback was, look, I do some serious thinking all day long. These are non-music majors at Cornell, right? I just, want, I just want to come to band and play, and I want you to tell me what to do. Wow. Uh, but valid, right? Uh, another student said, well, I, don't, I really don't know what you're asking. You know, I've never been asked to give my opinion before in a rehearsal, so I don't know what you want. To another student who said, well, I don't want to be that guy. You know, well, you know, I think it's a four-measure phrase, not a two-measure phrase. You know, and you know, everybody's, you know. So then, you know, I had to think, well, how can I create a culture of I'm vulnerable, you're vulnerable, it's okay, and I ended up doing it online. Uh, I mean, these are the students that we teach now live in a virtual world. I walk around Midwest. 20 years ago when I walked around Midwest, we looked at each other and smiled. And now you walk around Midwest and there's just a lot of this, right? Or a lot of this. And so we're teaching a whole generation of students that have not known the internet, that have not known chat rooms, that have not known uh, the virtual world. And pretty soon it's going to be a largely virtual, and certainly artificial AR, VR world. We're going there. And if we don't think we're going there, then, you know, I think, wake up. We're already pretty much there. Um, and so I sort of thought, hey, well, why don't we do some of these questions anonymously or not anonymously? And, you know, I struggled with that online. And it turns out that students are much more comfortable talking about these kind of things virtually. In fact, they were all over it. And so what I did at one rehearsal is I used all of the information that I, found, that I got online from the students in the next rehearsal. It came all from the students. And so little Sally engineer over there, who never says boo, um, realized that I was saying all of the things that she said online, and she felt pretty special. And she should, because she was really smart, saying all the things that I was saying. I mean, they all hear it. And nobody wants to sound bad. <laughs> that took me like five years to learn, that nobody wanted to sound bad. Why am I yelling at that kid? It's not helping. Ah, anyway, um, and that in that online process, that virtual sharing of ideas, 
be it, then it became more comfortable to do it in the real world. And that sounds really bizarre, but that's the world we live in now.